we're working with the costoclavicular ligament. The reason why we want to work with this ligament is because it has the ability to be irritated or be hypersensitive when we have an injury that has uh, either had the clavicle rule anteriorly and inferiorly towards the first rib or if the first rib has been pushed up into the clavicle. If we have any patients that are complaining of heartburn or uh, deep achiness in through, in through the chest, then working with this tissue is, is important because it has that referral pattern. Um, working with costoclavicular ligament is important because it has connections to sternal, sternal clavicular capsule and ligamentous tissues. It also sits in the same fascial tissue as the subclavius muscles. So in my practice, when I work with subclavius, I work with costoclavicular ligamentous tissue and vice versa. So when working with costoclavicular tissues, you want to have proper posture and biomechanics. You want to make sure that you are uh, in a comfortable standing position. You want to have your hand placement so that you are coming into contact with that costoclavicular ligament right at the proximal end of where the clavicle contacts the manubrium and the first rib contacts the manubrium also. And right at this portion is where this ligamentous structure is. Now we want to have both thumbs supporting one another. You want to have good contact with the rib. If we get our patient to take a deep breath in, we should feel the first rib contact our thumbs. And then when they take a deep breath out, we should be able to load through into the first rib and feel that osseous structure. When you're working with the first rib, you're working with that costoclavicular ligamentous structure. So the direction that we treat this ligament is we load the first rib down towards the table with our thumbs. We then scoop the first rib in fairly towards our patient's calcaneuses. And then what we do is we gently influence the tissue laterally away from that manubrium. We respect and cooperate with the reciprocal tension of the tissue. We match the barrier of the tissue and the elasticity of the tissue. We don't try and force the tissue beyond what it's capable, capable of handling. If we want to incorporate breathing techniques with treating costoclavicular ligament, then what we do is we instruct our patient to take a deep breath all the way in so as she breathes in, I follow the first rib out. As she breathes all the way out and exhales fully, then I load the first rib down towards the table, down towards her calcaneus, and laterally with my thumbs, I've taken up the slack in all directions of that tissue. Remember that we disengage, we exaggerate, which is what we've done. We've exaggerated this dysfunctional pattern creating a situation where all the lines of tension have been taken up in this tissue. We're waiting for that neutral and balance point to be created, making a change in the environment. I'm loading down equally with both of my thumbs. And she can take a deep breath all the way in. And then all the way out again. We will take up the slack in the tissue. So a direct technique towards the table, towards her calcaneus, and then laterally again. So we start with a direct technique. It turns into an indirect technique where it now starts, the tissue starts to soften, following the direction of ease, cooperating with that reciprocal tension of the tissue, not loading through the barrier, being present with the tissue monitoring the elasticity 
and the changes in hydration into the tissues. The general environment now feels completely soft, feels nice and warm. So what I'm going to do is have her take a deep breath in. As she breathes in, I'm going to slowly release my pressure. And then I'm going to re assess, reassess, just for elasticity of the tissues, just by loading that first rib posteriorly, inferiorly, and laterally through that direction. And there's a lot more elasticity through this tissue now.